How does working memory influence classroom learning and your students' behaviour? 2 plus 2 equals, where is Mount Vesuvius, who was the first wife of Henry VIII, what's the second planet in the solar system from the sun, and could you tell me the colours of the rainbow in the correct order? Now because I threw these questions to you at surprise, even though I know you can rewind the video and check the questions and cheat, or that you are a certain age watching this video and you may or may not know the answers. Because I posed them by surprise, you had no forewarning. I suspect you can remember one or two of the questions and maybe get some of the answers right. So without checking the video, can you give me one or two of those answers to the five questions that I posed? Now, because I didn't give you any warning and I know a little bit more about how working memory functions, I know that how I taught or delivered those last set of instructions was not helpful to the learning process. So in the blog post, there is a link to a new academic research paper on short-term and working memory that summarizes three aspects of working memory, which I believe is important for all teachers to know. The first, it's capacity limits. Second is the neural basis of working memory, so how things are connected in our brain anatomy. And thirdly, the control of working memory concepts. There's also some questions in this. So I've given you 10 CPD questions to ask yourself or to reflect on with colleagues in your school. But one key question from me as ever is, how do you as a teacher adapt your tasks in classrooms to suit the working limits of the students that you teach? I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.